Hello guys and welcome to the part 2 of our video series uh, Max Exploit of the Pool In today's videos we're gonna go through two situations We're gonna go out of position single raise pot as the PFR and in position single raise pot as PFR We're gonna see how the pool play in these pots um, We're gonna only do these two situations because there's actually a lot of interesting stuff in it and uh, we want to cover it all uh, first, I want to say that uh, in out of position SPFR, uh, our situation where, for example, uh, early position or middle position or cutoff opens and in position is calling. Uh, small blind versus big blind is excluded in this. Uh, we have a s uh, pop up that is that is only for this situation: small blind versus big blind pop up and big blind versus small blind pop up. And we will go through that pop ups in future videos where we will actually have the opportunity to see how the pool play exactly in the situation small blind versus big blind and big blind versus small blind uh, this is something different and that's why we exclude it from uh, from the pop-up because here uh, actually civet frequency is lower because you are out of position against condensed range that is hitting uh, quite uh, good uh, certain type of boards and your civet frequency goes way down so let me see what the pool is actually doing when he when when it's playing out of position uh, we see that starts of the pool uh, of the civet starts out of position is 40 percent uh, uh, betting the flop and the turn double barreling out of position is 52 and river is 52. okay now let's go and see which type of boards the the uh, pool uh, likes to be betting. Uh, we have here the sizes that pool is using. So we, from what we see, that uh, uh, actually the most size that pool is using is from uh, one fourth to uh, forty percent, and from forty percent to sixty percent, and then we have also some a portion. Uh, of uh, 60 to 80 percent so this is the basically uh, what uh, most of the size that pool is using because other sizes lower than 25 percent and over 20 over 80 percent is rarely in use um, and uh, just think let's talk about actually uh, the sizes you want to be using uh, soon as the civet frequency is going down actually your uh, seabed size should be going up so uh, generally you want to be submitting out of position more polarized range and more uh, with, with a bigger size so there is not many situation where you want to use small size actually out of position exception is small blind versus big blind because here the ranges are the widest and actually in position range can have that much advantage in you but when the in position range is really condensed and it consists a lot of pocket pairs that flops you know really really good and you have some uh, suited broadways some suited aces some suited connector hands that type of range actually hit de really decent and it hits a lot of boards even better than the range of let's say middle position or cut which is pretty pretty wide range 20% uh, plus and you're basically against 5% uh, uh, of range and it's it will up, up flop you in many occasions uh, okay, and let's now go to boards which the pool is civeting. Uh, here are the type of boards we have. Uh, basically, this is all type of boards there is. We have Ace Low Rainbow, Ace Low Connected, Ace Broadway X Rainbow, Ace Broadway X Two Tone. So uh, it's pretty uh, explanatory. You see uh, uh, Ace with the Broadway, Ace with the Broadway uh, Two Tone. We have Ace Ace X, uh, Ace Ace Broadway. So uh, all the type of Ace X X boards. Uh, then we also have same from King Broadway X, King Broadway uh, X to Tone, three Broadways, two Broadways. Basically, uh, from Queen X X to Jack X X to lower boards to monoton boards. You're all covered up with boards. Um, Seabed frequency. Uh, on most Ace X boards uh, will be low, or uh, even playing check range is a good strategy to be. So, Ace Low Rainbow indicates like Ace through, through Deuce through Nine, 
should be basically having a check range to in position player and here we see that pool uh, is playing this from the beginning wrong you we see that uh, cbit frequency on a slow rainbow is 42% out of position uh, on a slow connected is 40% out of position and from what we see here in the diagram uh, is that people actually bet garbage they bet on ace 4 9 they bet queen 10 on ace 9 6 they bet king 10 uh, they bet queen joke on ace 5 9 now let's now go to the ace low connected which is even uh, worse to bet to be betting we see that people are betting jack 10 on the ace 3 8 queen on ace, ace 9 deuce um, queen 10 on the ace deuce 9 uh, uh, king 10 on the ace deuce 4 to tone uh, we see they are betting a lot of uh, a lot of top pair hands a lot of middle pair hands uh, sevens uh, pocket jacks pocket queens um, queens on ace a3 uh, jacks on ace 3 6 to tone so a, a lot of betting is going on against the range that uh, actually you shouldn't be betting against uh, even hand like top pairs you see like ace jack on a6-4 ace 10 on the ace deuce 5 all of these hands should be checked and the pool is not doing that pool is betting their over pairs their sets their top pairs their top pair with kickers uh, their sets and two pair plus not over pairs because in the ace xx there is no over pairs uh, but basically you you get the picture they're betting their like uh, top pair plus hands alongside with some middle pairs and alongside with complete trash so as soon as we see this uh, we see that the pool has completely wrong strategy and here on the hand to note we actually see uh, next action what the pool is doing uh, they bet double barrel uh 49 percent out of position on these type of boards and here we see what they're doing against the raise so they fold 58 percent call 33 and re-raise uh, 8.3 so their strategy is floated at the beginning immediately uh on the eight on this type ace xx boards except ace broadway x and ace broadway x to tone and ace ace broadway uh, actually on these type of boards you want to have a CB strategy because now when it's ace and the Broadway you have uh, a lot more combination of sets than in position player has and you have a lot more combination of the two pair than in position has and on these bro boards where you have actually a range advantage you have you can actually have a CB range um, also it's not just important uh, uh, in the nuts advantage area so for example on the ace queen four uh, out of position player has aces and queens that in position player doesn't have because it tributes that hands but uh, what, what is also important and that comes uh, into equation especially on this ace low rainbow boards is how the uh, uh, flop hits in position range and that's why because in position condensed range hits this board better it has a lot less air in in, in the range and that's why uh, the out of position player can just have CB strategy and this guy does, just doesn't care about the, all of these things uh, their strategy is CBET and CBET a lot CBET with merge range on these boards and with knowing that you can immediately uh, build really good counter strategy to them so first we will concentrate on the boards that they shouldn't be sibeting on which is like a slow rainbow a slow connected and they shouldn't be sibeting a lot on those through nine dry boards again these boards uh, you see that people are sibeting 42 percent 62 percent is weak so the guys will just bet king queen on the deuce five nine king jack on the four 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 queen jack on the deuce deuce eight king queen on three eight three king jack on the five five nine king jack of the five nine nine again like all of these low boards through nine through deuces through nine paired uh just basically that they are rainbow uh people will bet hands like a queen jack like a king jack complete trash hands like a queen 10 
uh, Jack 10, King 4, and Deuce Deuce 7, 6, 7, or 3, 8, 8. So people will bet a bunch of hands on these type of boards that they have full air on it. Because if people uh, open from 20 uh, on the UTG through 28, 29, maybe 30% on the cutoff, uh, and they uh, now uh, uh, get to the spot where the board is that low rainbow board, and they have like uh, really really a lot of air in their range and they just have a CB strategy into the range that actually doesn't have a lot of air that has a lot of nutty hands that has basically their like weakest hands are hands like broadways with the backdoor flush draws uh, 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 ace high with the backdoor uh, flush draw or straight draws so that are the weakest hands that they are sibiting in against and all of the others like are the nutted hands that are more a lot more frequently in the imposition range and they don't care they will see that ace king ace queen ace jack ace queen on the deuce deuce six um ace jack on the three six nine so they just don't care they bet their low pockets they bet their middle pairs they bet their all over pairs and when you are f now know that the pool is actually doing that the good thing to do is to pre prepare the counter strategy for them uh, also the monotone boards you see they're sibiting uh, basically uh, monotone boards should be also played mostly as a check range of the position uh, and people are basically don't doing that there you see having a lot of sibit range uh, from around 30 percent of sibit range a lot of draws are betting has like a king 10 the 5 6 7 monotone ace 9 or 3 6 7 monotone so a lot of like weak draws or even like decent draws but still uh, are betting into the range uh, that doesn't have uh, a, a lot of uh, like weak draws and actually hits really really good and you see like on this like two broadway hands or three broadway hands um Situations are different. You have you can you can bet more, but on the ASXX on the low boards like do through nine dry, um, on the uh, Queen XX also boards, um, Jack XX your civet frequency shouldn't be that high. Um, you see, and basically from what we see, the pool is over civeting all of these all of these boards. Um, the biggest mistake we can concentrate but even on this they are also over submitting queen xx board they're also over submitting jack xx boards you see like on the jack xx rainbow the pool is uh generally having 53 percent of range that is actually weak range so let, let's let's just put it here and just let's see how many you see like almost like 40 percent of range is got 40 Two percent of range is gutshot and, and and worse, and they are sibiting that range out of position. You know, uh, this is like really big deal. And let's think about strategy we want to use to counter them. So now that you know their strategy, now that you know that they are sibiting on the spots they shouldn't be betting, our strategy will in do include a lot of raising in position. Um, your range will just hit better you'll have less air just immediately remember that you'll have less air you'll have more knotted hand more frequently knotted hand uh, and they will see that a bunch of this just you just take this picture in your mind and remember it they're sitting out of position full of weak hands hands that shouldn't be there ever uh, full like a lot of middle pairs betting sevens on the deuce a jack five nines on the jack three four tens on the do six jack what are all of these hands all of these hands even like top pair sweet kicker jack nine on the jack does four jack ten on the jack three eight uh queen jack on the three jack eight all of these hands and let's see how much percent of range it is basically all of this 10 23 25 29 33 40 50 60 70 percent of range guys what will 70 percent of range that are not top pair good kicker plus 
what we'll do against the raise or against the raise in position. But first of all, they will hate the raise. They will immediately go, "Wow, I'm I'm getting raised with this. What I want to do? Okay, I'm gonna call. I have a backdoor draw. I'm gonna call. Uh, I have a low pair. I'm gonna call. I have a middle pair. I'm gonna call. Maybe he's raising. I don't know, backdoors or 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 air or or, or some kind of uh, gut shot." So 70% of their range is deep, immediately in deep trouble on the flop because of their poor strategy. Immediately on the flop, they're in, tough, in, they're in a tough spot. So immediately you want to raise them and put them in a tough spot on the flop. They will proceed. You see their civet and fold is 38%. So uh, we see here they will fold a lot of weak hands immediately on the flop they will fold a lot of hands like maybe ace highs without backdoors uh, but they will also continue with a lot of weak hands so their civet and fold to raise is 38 percent so immediately will fold out 40 percent almost 40 percent of the range will immediately fold out and call raise for the fall turn is again 40 percent so betting on the turn will get rid of another 40 percent of their continuing range and on the river, actually, they will also fall 40% of range. Um, so, by raising the flop, you're putting them in trouble. But betting the turn and showing the river, you're just like making their life really, really... Uh, they, they, they just hate the position you put them on. But why? Because their strategy is bad. Their strategy is something that shouldn't be playing like this. You have a full of weak hands that are sibiting, that are facing the raise. Uh, you continue with uh, some of them on the turn, and you continue some of them through the river. And what you're going to do on the river? And we saw in the previous video they overfold the river significantly. So you want to remember ace low rainbow, ace low connected. You want to remember queen xx rainbow. You want to remember even king xx rainbow is full of weak hands, uh, and all of these uh, low boards. You want to. Picture that in your mind and just remember and f put them with raises and continuing on turn and reverse because their range is poorly constructed and they will just can't handle the hit on. Um, now we can ask ourselves what type of hands we want to be raising. Um, let's go uh, to see some flops. Uh, okay, so uh, let's took example and see like they are uh, they open let's say middle position or cutoff you're calling on the button your range on calling on the button you know, will be a mixed strategy uh, around five percent of hands you're gonna have pocket pairs uh, broadways suited broadways some some uh, suited aces and uh, there's a couple of different hands you can raise uh, you can raise with uh, your value hands your uh, two pair plus hands uh, you can raise uh, with your obvious draws, like a flush draws, like an open-ender draws, but you have uh, more hands that you can raise. Uh, you can definitely raise blockers. Uh, you can raise uh, turning pairs, uh, like hand, like for example, on the ace, uh, ace four, six. You can just uh, raise a hand, like um, let's see what was the board okay a on the ace six four let's say you can raise a hand that you call like four five five six you have because your value range is like sets fours and pocket fours pocket sixes you want to also um, uh, turn in uh, bluffs that can that can include these hands so we want to turn them into bluff hands like four five uh, suited five six suited so you're blocking a set uh, uh, you uh, you're basically e even you're blocking the value range of your opponent and you're semi-bluffing with it. You can hit uh, like a sneaky two pair or uh, sneaky trips, but basically the point is you include this type of hands into as your bluffs uh, and then like bet it aggressively on the turns and reverse. Their strategy will not uh, be able to take it uh, and you will just uh, be exploiting them, basically max exploiting them and uh, they'll just need to change their strategy because uh, 
I don't see that this type of pool and I play against this pool they're just like willingly uh, uh, calling a raise out of position calling a turn and calling a show on the river with middle pair or a weak top pair they're just not doing that we see on the river pop up there or folding the rivers uh, and basically you can just exploit them really hard in these situations okay now let's go to the other stuff I wanted to show you so this is their civet, uh, civet out of position we see, we saw that uh, on which boards they're betting uh, we want to see their triple barrels uh, just remember when you're in position you face the triple barrel it's going to rarely be a bluff uh, on the ace-xx it's going to never be almost never going to be a bluff ace low rainbow zero percent of weak hands ace low connected 14 percent of weak hands ace red wakes nine percent so on the ace-xx boards on triple barrels people are not bluffing uh basically at all they are rarely rarely bluffing and bluff catching in these spots not going to be very profitable i'm not saying you don't want to call your best bluff catchers i'm i'm calling my best bluff catchers because I don't want to be exploited but when you're on the like uh, you know that your hand is sometimes a call sometimes a fold go with a fold uh, if you're having like a borderline uh, call go with a fold uh, on basically even on the King XX basically no bluffs uh, across like three broadways two broadways they're not bluffing uh, often basically where people are bluffing is on these lower boards uh, we see that uh, uh, like uh, three in a row, ten high, so that's like three, four, five, five, four, six, seven. And when the scary card or like completion of the straight uh, comes, they just use these opportunities to to be bluffing most of the times. And also, what we notice, their bluffs will be uh, on this like deuces through nine. Their mostly bluffs will be. On, on some scary cards that come like three 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 eight and the river comes a king or king here or all kind of like a jack and they just uh, use these opportunities to 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 be bluffing on these scary cards so triple barrels generally we see boards that they are not bluffing just remember that they are going to mostly be bluffing on this uh, connected boards when the four of the straight comes and basically on these lower boards when that scare card comes they're going to use this opportunity to be bluffing more but generally the triple barrel is going to be really really very really heavy uh, across this um, so uh, against uh, on this uh, boards like uh, ace xx king xx queen xx where basically river can change that much they're not going to bluff that much uh, on the boards that river can give a four straight can give a scary card they will bluff this uh, but even though it's it's like 30 40 percent of bluffs uh of weak hands so this is the spot you want to actually be bluff catching um okay let's go now to to one also cool cool uh situation uh out of position against in position and the third flush hits on the river we have a flush draw on the flop third third flush hits on the river and from what we see like you see so it was flush flush draw on the board the the river gets that flush um rivers get river gets that flush and basically from what we see across all the boards they are really, really bluffing so just remember when you're in situation the river got the draw uh, done on the river and you are asking yourself do you want to bluff catch no you don't want to bluff catch because across all the boards like 85 percent of the range is not bluffing it's like top pair plus uh they will mainly use with this top pair weaker like block bets uh but generally they will not be just bluffing this spot so uh it's always interesting that spot when the flush hits uh because a lot of people play it differently but all of them had together is that they will not bluff enough these opportunities they will not find enough intuitive bluffs to be doing that and generally from what we see uh, only on like uh, where are bluffs like three in a row ten high so that's gonna be again four five six uh, five six seven 
and maybe uh, 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 like Ruru will complete with a flush it's going to complete the straight and they will maybe uh, just use this to, to be bluffing but generally on these static boards where nothing changes they will just not be bluffing when the flush hits uh, enough uh, okay and now I want to go also through one uh, interesting spot uh, delay bets uh, I had a feeling at first that people are under bluffing delay spots let's now go into delay and see if that's the case that's actually not the case people are out of position delay cbiting basically a lot as a bluff you see uh we see basically a lot of a lot of weak hands okay this is not going to be all the pure bluffs it's going to be mixed with hands like uh, like a low pairs uh, and maybe some percentage of them uh, is overplaying their hand and maybe they they think they are betting for value but generally the delay cbets are way weaker than I thought generally it thought uh, in the time where I was thinking about it I was working on it before like maybe a year I, I, I just uh, do a lot of delay cbets and in that time I just thought the pool is not not that bluffing it but actually the pool is bluffing it um, and from what we see again mostly uh, is not bluffing on the ASXX boards uh, because from what we saw they actually have a lot of CBETs on the ASXX boards uh, and uh, they are not bluffing this spot as a delay CBET enough but across all the other boards basically we see a much larger number of bluffs so here's around from 20 to 30 and on the other boards it's gonna be around 50 to, to, to high 40 percent of weak hands uh, this is delay and bet, uh, delay and fold to raise, which is 41%, which is still, uh, I would say, not that high. Uh, but it seems you want to to know that their delay bets, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, we see pretty, pretty, uh, is it like 60%, 70% is gonna be. Uh, like a, a, a bad top pair and, and weaker in their delay lines and actually uh, more than 50% is gonna be a uh, middle pair lower so and we see that generally their bluffs gonna be around 30% it's gonna be like bluffs like a draws and lower without a pair and what we want to see now is what they're doing on the river because the land bet is 55 percent and now we actually see that they're not that continuing much on the rivers uh, so their delay seabed has bluffs and delay seabed and bet river uh, we see that it's around 20 to 30 so it's not that like over bluffed uh, they they will put a delay seabed as a bluff they will put it on the river they will not bluff too much they will not get out of the line here and again on the ASXX boards you're just safe you can just do a lot of fold to delays fold to triple barrels fold to delay and, and bet river lines people are not bluffing these ASXX boards at all most bluffing again is going on on these uh, low dry boards uh, and uh, low connected boards when the fourth fourth of straight comes people are even like that fourth of straight it's not gonna uh, impact out of position range that much at all it's gonna pretty much impact in position range more but people just uh, do like okay the, f the straight is there I'm just gonna wrap the straight even they don't think how many combinations straight they will actually gonna have so this is the, the spots where this pool of mid stakes on the poker stars is actually doing it. They are just bluffing these spots uh, with basically they're they're in across all the lines. They are mostly bluffing these dry boards, uh, this uh, uh, three of the straight, uh, and when four of the straight and scary cards come, that's the, like the most common bluff spots from this pool. Okay. Uh, I want also to see uh, you see like this their check raise uh, on the turn and rivers like we saw before uh, 
basically are value extremely extremely value heavy uh, so when you when you see when you actually see uh, that they uh, when they like uh, uh, raise a turn you see uh, you you're just gonna be always you're gonna be always look at this this is like monstrously value heavy so when they raise a turn like 85 percent of range is is is, is value 85 percent of range is value and you're gonna have in the pool mix of weaker players mix of whales and and, and fishes that uh, gonna raise value top pairs for value and that's because this is across all the pools but generally it is like a value heavy uh, uh, line their check raise uh, uh, on the turn and check raise on the river is pfr is like pure pure value uh, check raise is pfr uh, on on the flop is where the actually most bluffs is going on so we he see here draws like ace highs complete trash king queens uh, we see some middle pair slow pockets but a lot of top pair plus hands also are in there so mostly uh, uh, is uh, as a check raise bluffing going on on the flop uh, let's see uh, their check call range uh, so check fold is 43 percent of the position which is decent um, and generally what we see their check call is uh, made of we see that people actually have in a check call range uh, two pair plus sets or pairs uh, so pool plays this their check range is way way better than it was years before on or when you compare it to the to the lower limits uh, Definitely their checking range is, is better. They're mixing as check raise bluffs a lot of hands and here we see uh, We see basically what are they that they're check calling a lot of hands like ace good ace highs like ace king ace queen ace jack uh, they are uh, check calling middle pairs, a lot of weak top pairs and good top pairs. So we see that actually uh, their uh, worst check calls, check call range is like on deuce through nine try. So on this on these boards, I think they will when they check, they will mainly check raise their over pairs and when they check all they're going to be mostly having hands like this so this is like pretty pretty significant because now we know okay their check call is 45 percent their check call is 43 percent their check raising 12 percent that have some uh, like mix of value through to bluffs but when we see like on on which type of boards their check call range is bad i want to know that because if i know that i know how to, i know in which type of boards I can be really aggressive on and from what we see uh, their check all range is really really bad especially on, lo on lower boards lower dry boards lower drawy boards even more uh, because on the lower drawy boards uh, like all pairs need more protection they will immediately want to check raise more with their all pairs and we actually see that their check uh, check, uh, ch check check calling range is really bad on these lower boards on these lower draw boards on these low connected boards on jack xx boards and queen xx board i would say that also has uh, to do with the thing because they are over submitting these boards and immediately their check range is way 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 uh, worse so our strategy against the pool here will be attack their check in range on all of these lower boards, low connected boards, uh, low drawy boards, jack xx board, queen xx board. You can attack these boards heavily. Their check call range is full of weak hands, almost half and even like 60% of their range will be ace highs and weak draws attack them with stabbing and maybe in, uh, introduce them to the orbiting step step orbit turn line because when you step and they check all they are somehow capped and you are basically uncapped and against the cap range you can just uh, uh, do a lot of orbiting on the turns 
so my strategy and i think that that would be uh, uh like really good to use when you see this pl this players check calling this all of this board that we we uh, we talk about when they check call it and the turn doesn't hit their range because what is their check calling range mostly we see it's mostly going to be ace king ace queen ace jack type of hands and like ace highs some ace highs like a7 on the 4 9 it basically it's uh, ace with the with the backdoor draw with the backdoor flush draw mostly like ace 4 on the 5 5 5 ace 6 on the 9 9 3 so if the turn doesn't bring like uh, their like queen king and ace uh, you basically bet all the turns <laughs> you bet all the turns and bet all the rivers basically because most of the range will be just breaking on the turn uh, there are some players that will still gonna call the turn with with their ace king ace queens, but when you just if you just go with the orbit on the turn and shove the river, they, that range is gonna, not gonna be calling it off because when we see a pull analysis on the river that they are falling a bunch and against an orbit they're falling over seventy percent, they're just not calling these hands because if they are calling those if they would be calling those hands, their check uh, f uh, their fold on the river against an orbit would be fifty percent or. 40 percent not 70 plus percent okay so now when we see these boards it's really nice to know them it's really nice to know where we can take this pool and we can definitely take them here really really strong and just be basically careful on the runout that hits them and that will be mostly the queen king ace uh, turns uh, okay uh, we also see uh, their triple barrel is really, really, really heavy, and their check fold is 61%. And I want to see what are their check calling range looks like. Uh, and one also important thing that I didn't say: uh, look at this. Their check call range is strongest on the ASXX boards. So I would say that people on this uh, uh, pool, uh, and basically this pool, is playing the ASXX boards uh as a as a as a check call they're playing it the best out of all of these other type of boards uh i think because ace xx boards are basically different from all the other boards and uh, you know when you start playing poker you just love the ace the ace is the highest card uh and your complete strategy is like f you you are always touring to the ace all all the, the players that started playing poker are always uh, when they get the ace they just feel like better and people just started to play this ace xx boards better but from now what we saw actually in the beginning we see that they are still making a lot of mistakes on these boards but in this in these spots actually their check call range is really really decent across these boards so we see here uh, a lot of top pair we can we kickered a lot of top pair good kicker um you see like they're they're just gonna have when they check all you on the ace xx they're gonna have a, a decent range and you're not gonna be able to exploit them on these boards but on these boards you can actually exploit them really much because green color here indicates basically the best is highest ace king ace queen ace jack so all of these hands you can easily attack and exploit okay uh, this is for out of position um, let's see just also uh, uh, this is their check check uh, check fold and check all check fold and check all check all check fold so uh, basically you see when they are check folding they are not uh, exploited that much uh, that you can like step flop uh, uh, then bet turn and better uh, with like any two hands but if you choose the right strategy you can know on the, on which boards you can doing that because from what we see there mainly the focus of their uh, strategy where they play the best is going to be on the ace xx boards so on these boards you're just not going to be able to put pressure on them uh, they will just be defending it good they will also be defending good this king xx board and uh, king broadway x boards and basically three broadway uh, re three broadway hands or two broadway hands they're going to defend it nice so 
that's the reason why this these stats are high because across all of these other boards they will actually defend it correctly but if we could filtrate the situation where they check call the flop on this type of boards that we know now that their strategy uh, is uh, f that has flaws we could actually make these numbers a lot higher so if we attack them on let's say uh, deuce five nine and the turn is like three and the river is like ten we will know that the range consists mostly on this like ace queen ace king ace jack hands and ace with the bread uh, with the, with the backdoor draw uh, we can we can make this number like not 37 it was going to be maybe 50 55 to 60 and the river will be a lot more than 44 it's going to be pre probably around 60 to 70 percent uh, another line uh, which i really thought is really really very heavy was a bet check bet line uh, let's see how the pool play this line uh, we actually see that this line is actually really very heavy uh, we saw that in delay seabed they have bluffs but in the delay and bet river they, no, they don't have that many bluffs um, so to conclude that it's pretty similar to the bet check bet line to be able to bluff this line you must be creative because a lot of your bluffs would be in not intuitive so you will be on like um, unknown land you're not going to be sure what you want to do you're not going to be sure what size you want to do which size you want to use and across all of these situations basically uh, players improvise and whenever players as players are improvising they're opening to making mistakes and that's what's going on uh, uh, why people lack bluffs in situation where there are not that much intuitive bluffs available and they need to be creative and that's where, where they struggle to, to get bluffs I would say the, the, the situation uh, is here with with uh, the with this line with the bet check bet line just look at this when they bet check bet and use small size like block size to half of the pot they are basically never bluffing because they don't expect fold equity with that sizes so the pool is not bluffing with block size not i would say frequently they're basically ever bluffing it and you should be start doing that because the pool is not doing it uh again we see that uh, even like this even this size around half of the pot to 60 percent pot is under bluffed uh, so generally this bet check bet line we see that is under bluffed line we see that uh, seven percent weak hand is in a block bet and some of that seven percent it's going to be low pairs so it's not going to be bluff it's going to be like low pairs where you block basically for value and a cheap showdown so bet check bet line is actually under bluffed line a lot out of position and small sizes generally people don't bluff with them re re uh, really often um, what we can else see that uh, basically on the on on the we only see like on this three in a row ten high but even like on these dry boards people are not gonna go crazy on a bet check bet so generally our conclusion from the bet check bet should be it's really under bluffed line and yeah people will rarely bluff it because every spot where there is a check somewhere you need to be very very good in the range versus range interaction to able to see okay how my range looks like now i check the flop what i'm check calling the flop with uh, what my range is continuing on the turn so you must be really really good in that range versus range interaction to be able to think about which which part of my range i want to be bluffing in this spot and people are not doing that and that's why this spot is under bluff because people will be bluffing mainly with improvisation let's see basically what type of bluffs people did use just to see uh, idea about what 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 they did bluff let's go from here Okay, 
diagram let's now pull the diagram here let's see okay king eight uh the guy bet small third was check check and on the six he just bet two thirds nothing we can see from there uh six six on the flop check check mm, again nothing we can see from there about about the idea of the strategy they may be using let's see from here uh, ace nine three three five queen he bet the flop check check on the turn 10 is uh, uh, uh is a 10 and they just put the flop you see like all of this that has uh similar is that people basically don't trap much you see like ace nine uh, the flop is queen 3 5 he bets small the imposition player calls turn is a check check a river is a 10 and he suddenly pots uh, i would ask myself if i was in position player what is he now wrapping with the pot uh, with the pot in the bet check bet line he's obviously wrapping now a polarized range uh, that's actually in this spot it should be connected with the two pairs and only two pair that we see is like a queen 10 in this spot so he's actually wrapping a queen 10 or pocket tens in this spot on the uh, on the other flop it was queen 8 7 the guy bets small turn goes check check again river is a 10 and he now gets bets big so he's now again wrapping a hand like a pocket tens like a nine jack uh, like a queen 10 or like a slow played on the turn which is unlikely that that in uh, <laughs> i mean uh that you're going to go on a check raise on the turn after you, after you bet small on the flop uh generally people with the big hands go into the orbit turn after the small blade when the turn is a brick so again you see like their logic in this all of these hands the logic is basically that they i, I would say that they are actually don't know much what they're, they're doing because they're just betting big in a spot where the logic would be you actually bet like half pot or one third where you want to wrap more you want to wrap like even 10x that got under you you want to wrap hand like a queen nine you want to wrap hand like a pocket nines like a pocket jacks so not going to a pot to go to the to, to the lower size to be wrapping more all of these people seems to to be now wrapping the immediately uh, a lot less of the range in this spot and the imposition player care can bluff catch more let's see on the ace jack uh, hand so out of position player bet two turns on the queen for five the turn is a 10 out of position player checks and the river is a seven and out of position suddenly bets eight uh on this spot yeah now now I would say the key point here, let's go to see a little more examples, uh, but I would say like a key point there is uh, that people like bluffs because they lack understanding of how ra how the range looks like and they're just improvising, they have uh, the hand and they just want to be folded and they just put the big size regardless of what they're wrapping and uh, basically a lot of their range was to be bet different size. Let's go here to see okay this is queen 10 this is value bet block bet on the river for value uh let's see here missed over card age jack let's, let's see now how he played this age jack uh so seven eight queen he bet half pot of the position turn is a queen out of position and goes check check and the river is a deuce and he suddenly puts the river you see like all of these lines they wrapped basically most of the time polarized range in a spot they shouldn't be because they they don't wrap with credit anything you see like what is he wrapping now on the river when the deuce hits he checked the turn on the queen uh and now he suddenly bets the pot so in my head he would be only wrapping queen x and i would ask myself is this is this a player that's going to check queen on the turn not going to bet it again and suddenly going to bet it on the river because most of his range is not going to be that queen uh, some queens will check all the flops some queens will uh, like ace king ace queen or king queen maybe check raise the flop uh, okay some of them will bet the flop but when the turn is another queen a lot of the range will continue to bet that queen and when he goes into the bet check bet line and suddenly bets big he's suddenly wrapping really narrow range about that queen that sometimes is going to bet turn someone's going to be check raising the flop so he's going to have even less queens in the range in the line that he's now wrapping so all, all the all the things that we can take from here 
is that people will not play this uh, uh, bet check bet line good because uh, when they're bluffing uh, they will not gonna rep credibly uh, uh, how their range looks like in that spot and to be able to do it you must have a good understanding of the range and then if you if you have the good understanding of the range with the creativity you can just be playing this spot a lot better and you can just add a lot more bluffs because uh, you will know how your range looks like you will know what are your value bets and you will actually be, uh, you can just uh, replica your size with your bluffs like you would do with your value hands okay you will see i have a lot of middle pair in this spot i'm just gonna bet at the size that i'm gonna bet with my middle pairs Okay, guys, uh, this will be for the out of position SPFR. We did cover a lot of things, so I'm going to conclude because we are 50 minutes now. Uh, and the next video, I will go to the in position uh, uh, single race spot. We can go spot by spot. We, we have the time. I think it's better to go into the deep through these spots because actually here's enormous amount of value that you can get. If you know how your pool play, you have really big advantage of them because you will know basically the strategy in the spots that we go through you will immediately know their strategy even without the sample even without the information even without the hard sample you will have a good idea about what are they doing so from this video you can just take the picture in your mind with the stuff that we go through through boards that they are bluffing to the boards they are, they are basically uh, uh, using the wrong CB strategy on uh, and just keep that boards in the mind when you're actually facing this type of the pool again and just be preparing yourself your game plan uh, how you can counter their uh, basically poor strategy from the beginning and try to punish them immediately on the beginning um, uh, I think covering uh, like in the details will give you a lot more value than if we go through phase through all of these spots so we'll, we can go just spot to spot. We have a lot of time. Uh, we are not rushing anywhere. So we can go into the details uh, spot by spot and see actually in uh, in a really, really small details what our pool doing and how we can counter them. So this is for the out of position. Next time we'll go to the in position. Uh, we can then also continue to the small blind versus big blind to see actually how people play when the ranges are pretty, pretty wide, much wider than these ranges. Uh, and yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, thank you for your time. If you like the video, tell me. If you like now this concept where we go more into the detail, I think just based on me, I'm a poker player and uh, I, if I watch the video, I would want to get from the video like more details and more in detail how to adopt the strategy and how to punish their bad strategy. So if you like it also let me know and I will continue to make this more detailed videos about the pool exploit. And I see, I'm see i gonna see you soon. It's gonna be a new video and if you like it in like uh, next couple of days. Thanks you and see you soon.